In today's video, we will understand how to handle events in a Spring Boot application using Spring's built-in support and classes. Before going further, let's understand what is an event and why you want to handle it. An event is a notification that something has happened. For example, when you post a photo on Facebook or Instagram and someone presses like button or comments over it, it is an event. Second question is why to handle it. When like button is pressed, Instagram needs to send notification to the one who posted it. This is its event handling mechanism. Now let's understand how to add event handling support in Spring Boot application. This is a Spring Boot project and this is the main class having Spring Boot application annotation. If you look at the dependencies, it has only Spring Boot starter web dependency. For event handling, we do not need to add any additional dependency. This is a service class or a Spring managed bean. It has a method that sends a REST call to an external web service URL. Let's say whenever a REST call is made, we want to raise an event that a REST call is sent from the application. Event can be specific to your application, such as an event when an entity is inserted into a database and others which we will learn later. Any event handling system comprises of following components. The event itself, such as request received event, response sent event, processing failure event, etc. It might contain information about the event, such as the body of request received or response sent, failure reason along with some additional data. Second is the event listener or handler who receives the event and performs the action desired after the event has occurred, such as pushing record to the database. Third is the source where you raise the event, such as after sending response back. Now let's understand how these three components are defined in Spring application to capture events. First, we need to define the event. Create a new class, name it rest call event. This should extend Spring's application event class. You need to define a constructor which accepts an argument of type object. Call superclass constructor passing it the argument object. You can add other arguments to this constructor as well according to the requirement. In this case, you also need to define the fields at class level for these arguments so that you can access them. For example, if you are defining an event to capture errors, then second argument can be the reason of error. Then define a field reason and in this constructor set this field and to access it create its scatter method. Let's revert this back. Second component that we need to define is the event listener which will use this event object. Create another class. Name it rest call event listener. This should be a spring managed bean. So add a component annotation over it. Next, define a method that should be called when an event occurs. In other words, this will be the event handler method. This method will accept an argument of the event which this method should handle. So, its argument will be the rest call event class that we created earlier. Print a message here. This source field can have any value that we set. In this case, we will be setting the rest API URL. Now, to make this method as a listener for this event, we need to add event listener annotation over it. If you look at its documentation, it says annotation that marks a method as a listener for application events. Whenever an event of this type is published, this method will be automatically called. Finally, the third step is to raise or publish event. For this, we need to go to the specific point where the event should be fired. In this case, it would be the service class where we are sending the rest call. In other scenarios, it could be the place where you are saving entities to the database or an exception block for raising error events. For publishing events, we need to use Spring's application event publisher. Auto add an object of this type. And after the rest call is made, call its publish event method along with the object of event as argument. Now, in this event object, we will pass the URL. Remember, we printed the URL in event handler using get source. Here we will get this URL. You can send any number of parameters to your event listener by adding them to this constructor. To call this service method, we need to get its object. We can get it from the application context, which I have already done here. In a real application, you can auto wire service class object and call this method using that object. Let's run the application. Look. The event is fired and it prints the message. So, 
This is how we capture and handle events in a Spring Boot application using its built-in support for events. That is all for this video. In the coming video, we will take a look at some advanced option in Spring Event Handling, such as handling events asynchronously and calling event handlers conditionally. Thank you for watching.